Hello, everyone. Welcome to discussion in week eight. Today's topic is diode. As usual, I will discuss、uh, confusing concepts first, and then let's do some exercises. After the discussion, you'll be able to solve problems with Sharkey equations, assume diode states with ideal diode model, as well as behaviors analysis of a rectifier circuit and a wave shaping circuit. Let's start. Let's quickly go over the basic concepts of diode. Usually, we define anode as a positive polarity reference and cathode as a negative. A negative reference, and the direction of current follows a passive configuration. We usually descri describe a diode's behavior using an IDVD diagram, and you may already be familiar that you have three regions: re reverse breakdown, and reverse bias region, and forward bias region. Okay. And because different kinds of diodes are fabricated using different materials and structures, we have many types of、mm, diodes. We will include two types of diodes in this discussion. The first type is called small signal silicon diode. Let's still use this IDVD diagram to describe its behavior. For a small signal silicon diode at temperature of 300 K, the reverse bias current is usually at the scale of one, one to the ten minus, uh, to the ten ten to the minus nine, order, um, one nano amp. And usually the breakdown voltage is about negative one hundred volt, and the voltage threshold. That the current will grow, inc、uh, grows rapidly, is called knee voltage, which is usually zero point six volt to zero point seven volt. As temperature increase, the knee voltage will drop, with a at a speed of two milli volts per k per Kelvin. Okay, so small signal silicon diode is. It's actually the diodes we usually see in our exercise、uh, and and exams with a drawing like this. And to approximate its behavior with a、uh, with an equation, we introduce Shockley equation. Shockley equations can be write down in two forms. The first form is to describe ID in terms of VD. The function look like looks like the saturation currents times e to the v d over n v t n and v t is given, or you can calculate the v t using the、uh, conditions in the in particular n is usually one to two, and v t is equals to k t over q, where k and q are、uh, Constants. If you write it、um, in terms of ID, it will be VD equals to n VT ln ID over IS plus one. After class, you can verify that they are equivalent. All right, let's do an exercise now. Suppose we have a diode. A temperature of 300 K, and we know that n equals to one, v t equals to 0.026 volt. Um, and someone gives the diode the current of, uh, the voltage of 0.6 volt, and measure it to get the current 0.1 milliamp. Okay, so the question is to find. The saturation current. How we will do it? Yes, we will apply the Shockley equations. So we first write down the equation, and then substitute the variables with values we know. Should be 
remember the 10 to the minus 3 because it's in units of milliamps, right? And IS is what we want to get, exponential 0 0.6 over 1 times 0 0.022, right? And after some calculation, you'll get IS equals to 9.5 times 10 to the minus 5 amp. Please check it. And one thing I want to warn you about is Shockley equation is just an approximation. Usually it is um, usually it is accurate, pretty accurate, when the ID is in the interval between this range. If the current is too large or too small, a Shockley equation might not be the good choice. Okay, remember we also have another kind of diode. It is called Zener diode. In the forward bias region, Zener diode's behavior is pretty similar to the to a normal diode, which which we say the small signal silicon diode. But its reverse bias region is uh, much shorter than. Um, than the one of small signal silicon diode. If you remember, we say that we said that the breakdown voltage is usually at the 100 scale for for normal diode. But for Zener diode, it is usually uh, smaller. For example, minus five volt. I'll take note here, just an example. Okay. And because the breakdown voltage is uh, is is fixed, um, um, the Zener diode is usually used in applications that we need a constant uh, voltage, and it is connected in the opposite direction. So we want to we attempt to um, utilize its breakdown voltage. You'll see it in the examples later. And the Zener diodes go very sharply. It's nearly uh, vertical. This is its special characteristic. All right, so we have a new notation for Zener diode. The line here is a little bit different, right? And when we use it, use its breakdown uh, voltage, the current is flowing from the cathode to the anode. Very different, right? And it's interesting that even VD is smaller than, for example, the, um, for example, minus five here. If VD is smaller than the minus five, like we apply, um, for example, we apply a 10 volt, 10 volt reverse voltage to a Zener diode, what will happen? All right. So we usually include include a current limit resistor in the circuit that we want to use the Zener diode. This is because the large resistor will limit the current small enough so that the voltage will stay at the Zener voltage. Okay, and from the from the behavior diagram, we can also see that when the current is small enough, the voltage will stay at the Zener voltage. If the current is too small, that the voltage is smaller than the breakdown voltage, the diode will become an open circuit, and the voltage across it will increase until it break again. It breaks again. So it always reach uh, reaches a balance that V equals to the Zener voltage. Okay. Next. Let's discuss ideal diode model. In the lecture, we mentioned that the ideal diode demo looks like uh, a rectangular angle in the IDVD diagram, right? It only, it only has two states, off and on. You'll see that it ignores the breakdown phenomenon. It also ignores the knee voltage, right? Apparently, it is only an approximation. We use it only for basic understanding of the circuit. 
for uh, intu intu intuition okay and our goal is to is to know all dial states in the current in the circuits and the states means that we want to know the on or off state of every diode all right an exercise here will be great exercise two here we have a circuit like this we can observe that there are two diodes in the circuit and we don't know they are on or off right the d1 can be on or off the d2 can be on or off too so with d1 and d2 we have four combination right Maybe you will uh, get a correct assumption, a correct answer after one or two attempts. But in this exercise, I will list down all four pos possibilities for you to better understand it. So, step one is to choose one state out of two, two to the end combinations. The step two is to redraw the circuit based on your assumption. If it is off, draw it like an open circuit. If it is on, draw it like a, a short circuit. And step three is to check if the results make sense for all diodes. So you need to check every diodes to see their status, uh, to see their situations. Only two kinds, uh, only two um, reasonable situation. The first one is when it's on, the ID should be positive, right? And the voltage across it should be zero. When it is off, the ID should be zero and the VD should be negative, right? Let's go back to the examples. First, let's assume D1 is off and D2 is off either. If we redraw the circuit, we'll see something like this. Open circuit here, open, open circuit here as well. From observation, we know that VD1 equals to 10 volts, VD2 equals to 3 volt when the current is zero, right? Apparently, it contradicts with the two possible situations in step three. So we can conclude that the result doesn't make sense. So the assumption is wrong. And what about D1 is on and D2 is on too? Let's redraw the circuit. Hmm. By solving it using the KCL, we'll see the ID2 is equal to minus 1.25 amps, which is negative. It can't happen when the diode is on, right? So the assumption is also wrong. Another possibility is D1 is on, D1 is off, and D2 is on. Does it make sense? Let's redraw it. Okay, so VD1 is 10 minus 3, which is 7 volt, bigger than 0. But the current is 0 because it's an open circuit. Does it make sense? No. So assumption is also wrong. And let's, let's see the uh, on your left D1 is on and D2 is on. If we draw the circuit, we'll see this is 4 ohms, this is 6 ohms. So we have 6 volt across the 6 ohms resistance according to the v voltage division. And we'll see that the VD2 is equals to minus 3 volt. And the current is there. It makes sense. Assumption. Great. You don't need to include every possibility in the exam if if it if the question does not ask for. Um, but usually you go through one or two attempts. Congratulations that you already know how to use assume diodes, uh, how to use the ideal diode model to assume diode states. And let's come to the next part, which is a little bit harder. Rectifier circuits. What does a rectifier do? Its ultimate goal is to turn AC into DC. It is usually uh, used in power supply circuits or um, for demodulation use in your radio. 
or television. We include two important circuits in this section. The first one is half wave rectifier. We call it half wave because only half of the original waveform was tr uh, transmitted to the output. To the output. Usually, we apply um, a, a big capacitance in parallel with the load to approximate to a DC battery. A typical circuit will look like this. Assume that it is an ideal diode and it goes into a load. We have a capacitance parallel to the load. Alright, in the VL will look like something in this diagram. Okay, so ideally we want the load voltage to be a, a straight line, right? Because we want it to be um, DC. But in reality, there is always some AC components in the VL. It is not ideal. Um, we call it a repo. All right. And uh, when C increase, the repo will drop. So we usually want to design uh, a big enough capacitance. The equation you, you have already learned in the lecture is IL, the average load current times T and um, the VR. So the VR is the repo. It is a peak-to-peak -peak variation in your VL output, in your VL waveform. All right. Also, VL, the average VL is approximated to VM minus VR over two. This is also straightforward. It's time to do an exercise. Suppose we want IL to be 0 0.1 in, and, and uh, we want the average VL to be 10 volts. And what we know is VR equals to 0 0.4 volt, and we know that the frequency is 60 hertz, so the, so the period should be one hour frequency which is 1 over 60. And we also know that our diode has a 0 0.7 forward drop. And please calculate C and Vm. What should we do? Let's still use a, um, use a diagram here, but now the diode is not ideal anymore. It has a 0 0.7 forward drop. So the Vd is 0 0.7 volt. Okay, and the diagram should look like this. And how should we compute it? Yes, we need to uh, utilize these two equations. First, because VL approximates to VM minus VR over 2, and we know that the VR is 0 0.4 volt here. We will get the answer by moving the terms and. The trap here is that you need to uh, add your 0 0.7 volt here because we have a drop of the diode so the source the vm should be even higher right and the answer is 15.9 volt next we will use the equation of capacitance 0.1 and 4 and we have a 1 over 60 here the answer should be 0 should be 4.167 Great! Congratulations that you know how to solve for the, how to decide the, the value of C and get the Vm. Next, we will go to the four wave rectifier. It is based on your understanding of a half wave rectifier. There are two kinds of um, circuits commonly used for a four wave rectifier. If you take a look at the, the, the circuit, you will see you will see that when uh, uh, when it is a half positive wave, the current goes through the upper of the circuits. When it is in the negative phase of the waveform, it will go through the the other way of the circuit. They are asymmetric. They are asymmetric, and uh, the output this. That's why it is called four wave. And you can also add a capacitance there. So it will look smaller, a uh, smoother, sorry. 
another all right another circuit with the same function we only have one voltage source but we connect the diodes in a smart way you may see this see a circuit similar to this in your homework a b c d great follow my follow my pen when it is in the positive half wave the currents will go through this way go through a to the load right and low is connected to the ground and then this is also a ground level right so they are basically the same node you can consider the two grounds as the same node so the current will flow back will flow back through b and then back to the negative polarity of the source okay if you rejoin it it is exactly the same as uh, the half wave rectifier and uh in uh the similar things happen for the negative half side but this time it will go through d and c please let me know you have any questions by email or by piazza whatever now let's come to the last section wave shaping circuits wave shaping circuits uh, are also popular in transmitter receivers design in your television or radars we will include two types of wave shaping circuits in this section the first the first type is clipper and the second time its second types is clamp let's discuss clipper first in the lecture we have a circuit like this it is helpful to know that it has it has other formats we replace uh, the DC voltage source with a zener dial we mentioned be great. Let's do an exercise here. Please draw the transfer characteristic and the output waveform for this circuit. All right, let's see what will happen. Assume we know that the voltage source is um, 15 sine pi t. Great. So the Zener and Zener dial work similarly in a way to restrict the voltage. Let's assume the breakdown voltage for the first Zener dial is, is 5.4 volts and the other let's 8.4 volts. All right. And when the source, uh, when the waveform is positive, the D1 will be on and the, vo the, the Zener diodes will be broken down to restrict the output as the same similar happens to uh, the second zener diode in the negative phase therefore the output voltage is between the interval of minus 8.4 and the positive 5.4 volts the transfer characteristic is different from the the idvd diode because it's horizontal V in is vertical axis is VO, and when VO uh, equals to V in, it is a it is a straight line across the origin with an angle of forty five degree. Right. So before the VO reach uh, f the the two breakdown voltages, VI and VO are equals VO. Right. So we are done. We are done with the transfer correct. What about the output waveform? It is also straightforward if you think step by step. The original waveform of the V in should be a perfect sinusoidal wave, right? But it is clipped, so um, let's modify the original waveform. Clip at 5.4 and clip at minus 8, right? And remember to. Um, write down the units of your scale because it's sine pi t so a period should be two um and this is vo in in units of volt voltage and your answer is cl complete the very last content in today's discussion is a clamp clamp circuit a clamp short circuit shift the entire ac waveform um so that with with a certain value so that the peaks the peaks become a desired uh, values 
And in the lecture, you learn that the VO of T equals to VN of T minus the voltage of the big competence. The dynamic analysis is um, when the, all right, um, it, it's determined by the state of diode. In the positive half of the input voltage, which is in blue, the current should be able to flow through the capacitors and the diodes should be on and then connect to the voltage and then back to the right. And because the conductor is on here, the current can be large. So the capacitance is being charged and its charged value according to KVL should be equals to Vn plus five, right? And we have, uh, we have two assumptions here. The first assumption for the clamp circuits is C is large enough. So it infers that its impedance is small. Another assumption is that R, so we usually think the C will discharge, dis discharge very slowly because you know the discharge, discharge speed is determined by uh, the, the uh, by tau, tau equals to RC. Because it discharges very slowly, we can consider Vz equals to a constant. And we can, uh, we can consider that um, uh, the voltage across R is also a constant. Great. With this condition, we'll know that even in the negative half side, which is in blue, uh, which is in green, when the voltage, uh, when when the when the current tries to go the other way, the Vc still equals to Vm times five here. And what will happen if we apply the KCL in the larger loop? Yes, the Vo will be equal to Vn minus Vc. It's continuity and the large. This is basically how it works. Another trick to remember is if the diodes is facing downwards, it means that we, we shift the positive peak to the values of the, of, the, of the voltage source beside it, which in this case is minus five. And if the diodes is facing upwards, we'll say that the circuit is trying to uh, put the negative peak of the original waveform to minus five. And more intuitively, I'll write, I'll draw the, the waveform here. Does it make sense? And the analysis process we discussed before, if VO bigger than minus five volts, the diode will conduct and its current will charge the C. And VC will go up and VO will go down. So the VO will be clamped at or below minus 5 volt. Thank you. So that is the end of the discussion. And thank you for, uh, thank you for being here. Good luck. And I'm waiting for any questions. Thank you.